Hello. Mental health and wellness is an important topic, which is even more pronounced during the pandemic. My name is Josh Pulls, and I'm a school counselor at Appleton West High School. At Appleton West, part of our faculty and staff's professional development centers around creating a positive learning environment for students who struggle with mental wellness. We have also partnered with community resources to bring about positive mental wellness fairs and community events to educate our students and community to take a proactive approach to positive mental wellness. The pandemic presents challenges to coming together as a community to, to discuss these important issues, which is why we are proud to announce that we will be starting a virtual mental wellness web series in conjunction with our partners that prevent suicide Fox Cities and Catalpa Health. It is our sincere hope that our students, families, and communities find these series beneficial and that we can continue to empower our community to discuss how we can best partner with one another to improve mental wellness for our students and for everyone in our community. Thank you for joining us and we hope that you will find these topics helpful and interesting. On behalf of Appleton West, Prevent Suicide Fox Cities and Catalpa Health, thank you for engaging in these courageous conversations. Enjoy. Hello everyone. My name is Mr. Rodeba. I'm the full-time tech coach here at Appleton West. During this presentation, I'd like to share with you some tips and tricks that may help you ease anxieties or stress when it comes to technology here at school. And I also like to just get everybody on the same page when it comes to how you should be using the technology in a way that will help you do well in school and won't stress you out. So I'm gonna start here. Sometimes people come down to the LMC because they're really, really worried that they're going to have to pay for their Chromebook. Maybe something's wrong with it or something accidentally got broken on it. And that really shouldn't be a stressor for you. OK, um, taking care of your Chromebook is the best thing that you can do. But every once in a while, things happen. OK, um, but to be able to keep care of it and kind of keep things from happening, there's some things you can do. Like keep your screen safe. That's one of the biggest things that uh, happens to a Chromebook is a broken screen. And a lot of times it's just students have their pen or their earbuds on the keyboard and they accidentally close it. So that's something that you could think about to kind of keep that from happening. Just remember the key, the screen, um, it won't cost you the first time that that happens, but if it happens twice in a school year, it will cost $40. Also, make sure you know where your Chromebook is at all time. Maybe invest in a bag or something that you always have it with you. Um, kind of just think of it as sometimes I've told students, well, you wear clothes to school every day, right? Think about the Chromebook like that. You're going to always have it with you. Like it should be as important as, as um, you know, your clothes, basically. You should have it with you at all times. Another thing is don't bring it in the gym locker rooms, okay? Don't ever bring them there because there's no cameras in there, obviously. So if you ever leave it in there, you know, some people can mess with you and, and take it and put it somewhere else. Never bring it in there. Always put it in your regular um, locker. And the gym teachers will give you time to do that. And then also know where your charger is. The charger is one of those things that people lose a lot. And those that's something that you would have to pay for. So if you know where your charger is all the time and you keep it at home, that's probably the best thing you could do. If you bring it to school, you're doing, you're, it's kind of like at your own risk. And if you lose it or if somebody takes it, you are, you know, you're obligated to pay for that. And, um, and typically a, a renewal for that is $38. Your responsibility at school. Again, just make sure it's with you. You could bring it to the class. I would just bring it to class every time unless a teacher specifically says, don't bring it here, okay? And then another thing to think about is this device that you get, the Chromebook that you get is not yours. So you should really be using it just for school use, not for personal use. Very, very often I see kids getting on and watching their own YouTube videos that has nothing to do with school or playing games. I'll talk about that in a little bit later, but um, you're, you're setting yourself up for a, a bad habit there and you could get caught, which isn't fun. OK, um, besides that, make sure that you're keeping your Chromebook in a locker or backpack when not in use. 
and keep it charged every day. So have have a habit of how you charge that when you get home and always make sure that wherever you plug it, it's going to be fully charged or the plug is working as it should and it could fully charge your device. Another thing to do that could ease your anxiety is protecting your password. Passwords are so important and you should never share it with other people. You also shouldn't write it down and put it on your Chromebook. Um, you know, if you forget your Chromebook somewhere, you lose it, and then somebody sees your username or password, they could go into the device and really mess things up for you. And that's happened before. Um, I've, I've seen it happen a few times, and it's not fun. And it could make somebody's life very, very hard if somebody gets their password and messes with their stuff. So protect your password. Something that I tell people is if you have a phone, take a picture of it and have the picture of your username and password, and you could always look back at it. Remember, the Chromebook is district property, as I said earlier, okay? This isn't yours. It has your name on it, but your name is on there just so if it does get misplaced, we could easily get it back to you. But it's not yours, just like me and the, the teachers. We have Chromebooks as well. They are not ours. We can't just go and do whatever we want on them. We have to use those for schoolwork, for doing our job. You guys have to do it for your job, which is school. And just remember... The district does have the ability to look at anything you do on your Chromebook, okay? Um, the Chromebook user agreement that you sign before you get these, I believe it's number 11, it says that anything you do on the Chromebook can be seen and is accessible by the district. So keep that in mind. Sometimes devices get locked and it's because of that. I'll get to that um, a little bit later, but your device can be locked remotely. And what's crazy is that if they see you doing some of that stuff, it could be remote, remotely locked just automatically. Also, think about this. Anywhere you're signed in with the school user username, you know, the domain that has at stuasd.k12, et cetera, you're basically in the school domain. So even if you're on a personal device, but you have your school account logged in there, that can be looked at. So keep that in mind. So what does appropriate use look like, okay? Some of the things I'm always talking to students about, and I've been talking to students about for years, are playing games, okay? Big thing is, if you wanna play a game, do it on your personal device, don't do it on a Chromebook, okay? It could trigger that locking of your device, so keep that in mind. Same with watching personal videos, okay? It's one thing to have some music videos going while you're doing work, but if, if they, if, Tech services notices that all you're doing all the time is just being on videos, your device can get locked. So if you have something that you wanna watch that's not school related, that's personal, do that on a, on a personal device if you have one. Also, the communication that we have, whether it's within Canvas or within um, email, that's used just for schoolwork. So if you're gonna communicate with students on that, that should be just for stuff you're doing in class. Do not use that as your social network, okay? That's not what it's for. Do that type of stuff on, on your own personal device. Um, same with using, one thing that I've seen people do is use Google Docs for communication. Those trigger off the locking of Chromebooks, so keep that in mind. Do not do that, okay? And we're just trying to get you in this habit because there's gonna be a time where there's a good chance you're gonna have a device for an employer after high school. And you really don't wanna be doing personal stuff on devices that are not yours and are for work. So basically it comes down to the device should only be used for stuff that your teachers are, are telling you to do. Why do this? It'll keep you focused on your schoolwork. Okay, if you're gonna have personal stuff on your Chromebook, you're going to want to do that stuff. You're going to want to play games. You're going to want to play videos. It's going to keep you from doing what you have to do. And then you're going to get stressed out because you don't have your work done. You'll get in a good habit if you keep doing these things that I suggest. Like I said earlier, someday you'll be in school and you'll be expected to have a work device. Employers frown upon devices being used for personal means. And like I said earlier as well, you'll be less stressed if you find yourself keeping focused on the school Chromebook and not using it as, as a personal device and not using it to communicate with people in personal manners. 
what if something happens to your device? So this is another stressor that students have. Sometimes the Chromebooks get lost, okay? Um, or sometimes they get broken, okay? So if anything happens or anything's broken, bring it to the LMC. Ms. Fettinger or myself can take a look at it. Chances are you will not have to pay a dime. Really, the only reason why you'd have to pay anything on your Chromebook is if somebody saw you doing something on purpose or if you lost the device, okay? Now, if you lost the device, still bring it up to us. Come to the library, tell us. We could have, we could tell tech services to lock your device and nobody could use it. Uh, and most of the time, devices are found, okay? A lot of times it's just people forgetting them in a, in a different room. And then we send an email out to everybody and it's found. So a lot of times you'll be able to find those, okay? And just know that di the district does pay an insurance policy on the Chromebook. So if anything is not working right, just bring it, we'll get it fixed. Consequences, all right? I don't like to be the one who gives these consequences and I'm not. I could, a lot of times I will warn students if they have devices locked and they come to me, but if, you know, and I'll give suggestions of what to do from this point on to not have the device locked, but if your device gets locked again, there will be consequences. And students who don't follow these rules that were in the handbook, um, you know, if they, if they don't follow them after the first locking, I just basically take take your name if I see it and I send it to student services. So then you'd get uh, have to deal with the consequences down there. If you have questions about any of this stuff, feel free to send an email to me or Miss Fetting, and, um, who also works in the LMC, or you could just come down to us and talk to us. I would be happy to help you. So hopefully these tips have helped you realize, you know, the Chromebook is for schoolwork. And if you focus and use the Chromebook just for that manner, that should bring your anxieties and stress with the technology down. Try not to do personal stuff on here. You're pulling that in, you're gonna set yourself to get in trouble and that'll just put more stress on you. So if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, my main job is here to help you guys use the technology and I'm happy to do that. So have a great day, the TerraPry way. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you found the information useful and that you'll be able to use it in your everyday lives. We do ask that you fill out a short survey and you'll find the link to that survey in this, the description at the bottom of this video. We'll use this information um, to help plan future web speakers um, and really to make sure that we tailor this to your needs. So please fill out that survey, give us your feedback. We hope again you enjoyed and that you found this information useful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week, and great rest of your year. Thanks.